stop by or give them a call today, 861-7484. That's 861-7484. You'll be glad you did. I know I am. Ocala Aviation. Your adventure starts here. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! minutes five minutes after 11 o'clock thank you for tuning in this monday morning just almost up to noon already hard to believe yeah huh? quick the morning morning. is flown by <laughs> well I, w- I wanted to do, uh remind you of something that you were very much a part of robin in uh 2008 i think right that's when the, my father died 2008 yes 2008 father's day of 2008 it was the last time i saw my father you know normal uh, healthy and then the next day he had this some something going on wrong with him and for the next until he passed away that year in November the yes. end of November mm-hmm. so we had from June June till November where we were all caretakers you volunteered your time also and helped out my mom was I guess the primary caregiver and yeah. the one thing that we learned from all of that is that it, it is hard to take care of somebody I, I mean it gave me so much appreciation for nurses in general uh, Carolyn A. Brent is on the phone. She is a speaker, a caregiver advocate, uh, the co-founder of A Caregiver Story, which is a nonprofit organization that provides free medical and legal resources for all of us, for the public. She's the founder of something called Grandpa's Dream, a program that provides vital information for the care and welfare of sick and disabled people and supports the mental, physical, and emotional well-being of caregivers. Which is an interesting thing because somebody's sick and you think somebody's well. The well person doesn't mm-hmm. need the care, but yes, when you yes. when you go through something like I just described, uh, the book is called "The Caregiver's Companion." Perfect topic for this community. We have so many facilities in our community, and so many people choose to stay home. To stay home. Yes. Or, or their loved ones prefer to have them home. Let me put it that way. And then they realize, gosh, I'm getting into something I never realized I was getting into, and then. You know, God bless them <laughs> because yeah. they re- they really put up with what they have to put up with. Yeah. They make it. They make it. Um, but this is this is a great topic. The Caregiver's Companion. Good morning, Carolyn Brent. Good morning, Carolyn. Good morning. How are you? I'm pretty good. Where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm actually calling from uh, Orlando. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Nice. So you're kind of familiar with yeah. what, what I'm talking about because so I think Central Florida is, is a, a place where people who are getting older will come a lot. It seems like it. Well, I've only been here for two years, so I'm still in the discovery stages of the, the whole state of Florida. Uh-huh. Although I've taken uh, several uh, trips up to the villages, and I find that place remarkable. It's, it's outstanding. So we have a lot of facilities that do this professionally. Is 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 that a, an option? Well, it's always an option. Why do, how do I want to ask this question? Are people using it as an option when they don't need to, or are they using it as respite care? How, what's going on? Now, are you talking about facilities where people are living, or well, like, you, like if somebody's a caregiver, okay, they they might say, you know what, this is a little bit hard. I think I'm just going to ask you to live in a in a an assisted living facility. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it seems like a cruel thing, but it might be uh, the best thing. I don't know. What do you think? Well, it all depends because caregiving, it, 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 there's so many different stages of caregiving. That's why I wrote the book. There are folks that need caregiving and they're perfectly capable of living in their own home, but they need someone to keep an eye on them. Then there's folks that may have to go into a, an assistant living environment because they're fine, but then they can't cook or they don't take their medicine. Uh, they don't know how to take their medicine on time, etc. So there's different levels of caregiving. And uh, to be honest with, the, with you, we all are caregivers in one way or the other. Even if it's care, caring for a pet or, you know, a, a, uh, a child or a parent and everybody's healthy, we are caring for someone in some form or fashion. This particular book is designed to help 
people to realize it doesn't have to be gloom and doom if we prepare at the early stages from a medical, legal, and financial stage of caregiving, then we could actually turn caregiving into a family affair in some uh, kind of way. The first time you were literally, and I understand what you're saying, but sometimes we're thrust into more caregiving than we had before, Mm -hmm. and that was kind of the description I was trying to give of my father. It sounds like you went through the same thing with your own dad, am I right? Absolutely. I had to do the medical, the financial, the legal, everything. And because I did not have any experience of ever taking care of a loved one, period, because uh, I don't have children or anything, and my daddy was like healthy and cognitive, and I thought he was going to live forever and ever. Once he had a sudden and unexpected health uh, challenge, I was thrust into that. And I tell you, it is no joke. The caregiving part, to me, is a more easier part, because you're going to care for your loved one regardless if they're living in a facility or not. The hard part, I felt, for me, was going through the, uh, the minutia of the health care system, the financial institutions, trying to figure out you know, what dad had, what he didn't have. It was all of the paperwork and getting all the legal documents in place to make those the, everything I was saying valid that's what I found was the most difficult part because I didn't know at the time I didn't know if dad didn't have a medical proxy that I couldn't make uh, medical decisions for him although dad had a medical proxy most people don't have that let's say that you're nice and healthy you're 30 years old you you walk out in the street and you get hit by a bus and you you do not have you know any family or or anybody who's gonna make those medical decisions for you or if families don't agree the documents will help to let that loved one's end of life wishes be what they want versus what family members want for that person yeah does and, that and make sense y- yes it does the the question i have is in order to make it legal do you have to go to a lawyer or can you just write it down on a piece of loose leaf paper and put it in a drawer somewhere that's a great question. You could do one of two things. You could do go to the attorney. You could go to LegalZoom.com. That's pretty uh, universal. And if you do decide that you want to put it on a piece of paper, get it notarized and have it notarized so that, that, no, that it's going to be longer than a year. Because if a person gets that lucid piece of paper and uh, they're just trying to do it themselves, most notaries will only last for one year. So it's best to try to get some type of assistance and then you could go to these law schools where students can help you know uh with that so it doesn't have to be expensive so now sometimes people are really tossing up in the air should they have the parents move in with them or should they put them in a facility uh now uh it seems to be more uh, financially uh, conducive that both are seeming to cost the same amount of money. Absolutely. It's just as expensive as having... When Dad moved in with me, I had to totally refurbish my uh, my home because we needed to be able to get a wheelchair in the a home. I gave up, you know, I had to turn one bedroom into a master bedroom for him because he needed a, uh, a bathroom in his, you know, like re- really in his bedroom. So it just depends. And then if you have to have someone to come into your home, that can cost... Uh, and I'm just, uh, this is like uh, pretty basic, around 300 and something odd dollars a day for 24-hour care if it's, if it's going to be like that, if you mm-hmm. need to have someone. Or it could be as little as just having an assistant with you that you could pay them $10 an hour depending on what state you live in. Oh, so yeah. it all depends on what type of care, the level of care your parent needs. Because wow. sometimes they, they can't be in your home. Always remember, safety, safety, sta- safety. Your safety, your parents' safety, your loved one's safety. Um, <laughs> I'll talk to you later, okay? That's okay, it's okay. Somebody's in the window trying to talk to me. Uh-huh. You, do you know what I wanted, to, I, want, I wanted to tell you something, that at the end of my dad's life, um, we had hospice. Hospice nurses had like everything. They asked the questions and, and every, they, they kind of really guided us. And I was wishing we had somebody like that, but not for me. Like hospice is like end of life is like imminent. Right. Yeah. But if, I mean, if like we could have had somebody like that way earlier, and, and in some people's cases, like in my dad's case, he only lived like six months, but some people live... 10 years. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so wouldn't it be Absolutely. nice if, so does the book 
provide what the hospice people provide at the end of his life so that we have that way before the end, uh, that kind of guidance is what I'm getting at here. You, you know what? Everything is in this book from, from when you identify that your loved one getting sick and you need to step in and help to the hospice and the people that's involved with hospice and what their jobs and responsibilities are and what they'll do. Because a lot of people don't want to talk about this subject, but the caregiver companion truly is a guide to really let people know this is not a bad subject, it's a good subject because if you, I find when I have a greater understanding of anything, then I have acceptance and then I'm more prepared when I accept something and know. It's the unknown that frightens people and, and death is something that we know that we, we all got to go there someday. We all have to go there. So it's better to be prepared and know the book, as far as hospice, to answer your questions, it literally takes a person step by step by step, who's doing what, why they're doing it. It's, a, it's very comprehensive. And a lot of the information uh, came from 1,500 uh, caregivers, post-caregivers, and also current care- caregivers that I used to accumulate this very, very powerful guide. And to me, it's a happy book. I wish I had it. And now... America and the world can have this. So <laughs> very, very, have very true. No, yeah. it, it is really good information. Uh, Carolyn, we need to take a little break and we'll be right back. Okay. Our weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Today will be rather cloudy. Look for a little rain and a thunderstorm during the afternoon and evening hours. The highs ranging from 68 to 72 across the region. Lingering clouds later tonight and turning cooler low by morning, 50 to 54. Tomorrow, any clouds will give way to sunshine. It'll be a breezy day with a high of 64 to 68. And for Wednesday, mostly sunny, the high again, 64 to 68. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Much like the weather, your life could change at the drop of a hat. Don't be caught unprepared. You don't know what'll happen tomorrow. But no matter what happens, you can make sure that your loved ones are provided for with a life insurance policy from Auto Owners Insurance. Meet with a local independent agent and secure a policy now to rest easy knowing you're protecting the ones you love. Visit George Mangan Insurance in Ocala today at www.manganinsurance.com. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Career Star Citrus Levy, Marion County, will be airing a special segment on Friday, February 13th at 9.30 a.m. about developing a new skills training program in collaboration with the Marion Regional Manufacturers Association. The program initially focuses on manufacturing training for computer pneumatic control, CNC operators, and programmers. However, the program can be customized to accommodate other occupations and industries. So listen into to WCA and Career Source for a special segment on Friday, February 13th at 9.30 a.m. to answer your questions. Career Source Citrus Levy, Marion County. All right, we're talking about the book called The Caregiver's Companion, Caring for Your Loved One Medically, Financially, and Emotionally While Caring for Yourself. Uh, the book is written by our guest, Carolyn A. Brent. And did I ask where Carolyn is? Yes, Orlando. She Orlando, is. that's yes. right, down in Orlando. Uh-huh. So where did you move there from, Carolyn? I moved from beautiful San Francisco. Oh, my goodness. You jumped across the country. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. Wow. How do you uh, address this with the younger children in the family? Because they might be worried that when they grow up, they're going to have that same situation, and they don't want to because they feel they don't want to be a burden. Yes. Uh, the way I address it, I, I share with people to turn caregiving into a family affair from as little as the three-year-old to everyone in between to all of the adults, the baby boomer and the parents. And the reason why I say that 
a seer is taught literally and passed down. So once we start sharing with the making caregiving a family affair, for an example, I used to have my niece to help dad pick flowers in the backyard or dad to read a book, you know, a kid's book to my niece. And that was getting her involved. And if everybody's involved, they're not going to be afraid because then everybody can openly work together. And, you know, one person may be the person that's going to take mom or dad or the loved one to the hospital. The other one could do banking. The other one could do the cooking. Everybody has talented people in their family. Now, for those that don't, don't have a family, because I've had that too, I'm an only sibling, people have said, and I don't have brothers and sisters, then you have to have an extended family. Create your own extended family. And that, those are people that you trust, people that love you for who you are, people that will step in and help you. And I have extended uh, family all over this country because they've helped me when I needed help, and now I'm helping them as they are needing help, even if it's just, that's why I developed the caregiver uh, uh, website with free information for the world. If they need help, there's something on there for everyone that doesn't cost a thing for, uh, a dime for information. I want to tell you a scenario and then just get your feedback about what you would have done differently or or what you would have done, period. The the scenario, uh, I'm going to give it a title, kind of like a Seinfeld episode, uh, the, the stubborn, healthy parent. And this is the scenario. There, there are two parents. One is, is uh, I mean, as the time goes by, dementia is setting in more and more and more. The other, the other parent is absolutely healthy, mm-hmm. absolutely of sound mind, the sound body, everything else. And, and in this case, it was the, it was the man who was fading. It was the woman who was the healthy one, right? But it could be reversed. Yes, it could. Okay, mm-hmm. so the mom was was fine. She was caring for the dad or the, you know, the her husband, mm-hmm. who was starting to fail because of dementia and some of the physical things that were starting to change in him as well so now the children say mom it's too much you're you you you, it's gonna hurt you you're doing too much we need to no 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 i can handle it so there's the stubborn part what what would you say to the i don't know who you would talk to the kids who would you talk to the mother how would you handle that situation I actually wrote a chapter about that too. That's called the resistant parent. And my dad was resistant. He did not want my help. He didn't want anybody's help. He said, no, I could do this by myself. A lot of parents think, well, you know, why do you want to help? Do you want my money? Or, or what is it that you want? After doing research, I discovered a lot of parents, a lot of people that are let's, in that situation you're talking about, they're starting to look my loved one is dying. My friends are dying all around me. So they're kind of running scared too. Well, what if my kid's got to take away the, ki- the, ki- the keys from me? What am I going to do? So they're going through the, like a, a depression, so to speak. So what I share with people, be patient with your parent. Let your parent know that you're there for them. It took me two years for my daddy to go like, okay, I can move to California because Carolyn, it's all about trust. It's all about a person's comfort zone. So don't give up uh, up on that stubborn parent. Just be there for them. Let them know mom, dad, or whoever this person is, whatever you need, I'm gonna be here for you. And just be there constantly. That will turn that stubborn, resistant parent around because then they are going to know that you really, really care. You uh, provide in your book what you call a, a cheat sheet. Absolutely. The cheat sheet, it goes through the entire book in two pages questions to ask when you go to the doctor's office, when you're going to a nursing home, a, a assistant living, how, you, how the caregiver needs to educate themselves, how the families need to have a crucial conversation, and most importantly, caregiver, we've got to take care of ourselves. We have to. This is an absolute must, and there's no other way around it if we plan on uh, giving care and caregiving is more than just caring for a loved one it's the financial the medical the legal all that rolled into one and the emotional so it can be difficult but the caregiver's companion literally is a guide to help you through the tricky waters of caregiving wow Uh, has technology helped us in in any way i'm I'm thinking of that device that people would uh, like there was an advertisement i can't get up or something like that Mm -hmm. has technology made it a little bit easier for us 
Oh, what a blessing with technology. If anyone ever sees me on television, I have a five-inch binder that I carried around with me with all of my doctor's medical, all of my dad's medical information, his financial, and I'd haul that with me from one doctor to the next, to the next, to the next, so everybody could know what they're doing. Now, this is in the 90s and the early 2000s. Now, a doctor could just press a button and the computer shares all that information. We have family members now that could use Skype and, you know, uh, free conference calls to dot com to listen and to be part of their parent or their loved one's yeah, life yeah. worldwide. So, yes, technology. I wish it was around when I was my, going through my stages, but it, it wasn't. So I created a book to let people know, you, regardless of where you live, yeah. you can help a loved one. You know, you talk, one, one of the words in the subtitle is the word emotionally. And uh, this is more, this was um, my mom's story. Toward the end of my mom's life, I had educated her. I helped her learn how to use the internet. I shouldn't say educate. I, I took it to the library. More, to oh. po- po- point blank, what I did, and I sat with her and, and showed her that the, it's not as scary or, or intimidating as you think. And uh, and anyway, this was. Be- I showed her this before my dad died. My dad then bought her a computer, and then he died. Okay, so now she was on, believe it or not, Facebook, yeah. wh- which oh. <laughs> for, for what yeah, she was eighty something years old, and and for all intents and purposes, it was a wonderful way for her to be social with so many people. She was, you know, because she, she was the one who always stayed in touch with people through letters, and this way it was instant. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And when we empower our loved ones, and when the caregiver empowers power self by getting the education we need about, let's say, our loved one's disease. Learn all you can about it. Keep our loved ones busy with, I commend you for teaching your mom how to use Facebook. Boy, oh boy, that's powerful. It seems it makes it easier on us all emotionally because it's very, there's no easy way around one's emotion when your loved one is declining in health. But I found it better for me. It helped me and all of the caregivers I interviewed. They said when they empowered themselves with the knowledge of the disease, they knew how to help their loved one better and they started accepting. You know, it's the five stages of grieving. It takes a while to get to the acceptance and I've got to the acceptance stage with my dad's dementia so um, it just made it a little bit easier. Was your mom still around? No, my mother passed in uh, 1995, uh, okay, and okay. Uh, and she was only 63 years old, so that was sudden and unexpected wow. for a 63-year-old to die like that. Yeah. So, yeah. It, and our in our family, it, it wasn't a problem. Every you know, we buried our mother and we grieved, and I had to learn about how do I handle my grief. So, uh, I've. I never knew that I was going to be doing this when I grew up. That's what I'm saying. But it's a mission and a calling that I have, and I really want to help uh, other caregivers and families to stay together. If they have the knowledge, knowledge is power. It makes a huge difference. So, the, so if, with Valentine's Day just a few days away, I want to ask you about romance with, with older people. I, I, <laughs> I have a, a, a real quick story. I, again, it's a, a couple I knew. The, in this case, the woman was uh, very much affected by dementia. She was living in an assisted living facility. The, the husband was with her every single day. I knew these two people. Mm-hmm. And he was mm-hmm. sitting with her hand in hand outside of the, uh, the Alzheimer's unit at the assisted living facility, and then he would go home. Well, one Christmas, I was invited to their home for a Christmas party, and I was surprised to find that he had a girlfriend at home, his own age. Oh. And, his da- and his daughter was there, and I knew the daughter because the daughter would always visit as well. Okay, so I, I was surprised, and one day I asked her. I said, what, what is a, I mean, does your mom know? that? No, she doesn't know, but my dad has to have a life. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. He obviously loves his wife. He's with her every day, but she's gone for all intents and purposes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it seemed. It didn't seem. I, I know. I think Robert Schuler one time actually endorsed that kind of thing, which was a surprise because you know yeah. a man of God t- telling That's people right. it's go it's go ahead to have an affair like that. But yeah. I think in that circumstances, what do you think? You know, I totally agree with uh, with that. I feel that whatever the end of life a person needs to do in order to have quality, even if that dad had a girlfriend at home, what can I say? I, I agree with that, too, because why should he sit in his home by himself when the wife is only here in body, but the mind is already gone? Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's a, it's just something, you know, and, and, you know, people have different thoughts in religions and, uh, and spiritual beliefs, but I look at the standpoint, he did a great job. He was still with his wife. Like I would tell people with my dad, if dad would sing, I would sing. And it, he would sing at the most inappropriate times, like in the <laughs> store. And I do the same thing. Oh, that's so we funny. both appear to be losing it, but I had the best time in my life when dad was having a d- dementia because I decided instead of me fighting it, I'm going to go wherever his mind goes. My mind is going to go there now, and I'm going to have fun with it. So I had to change the way I was thinking because my hero ended up turning into, you know, my my son. You know, yeah, a, a handicapped yeah. Well, you're, son. A, you're a beautiful so. lady. I just found you a picture. Thank you. <laughs> See, I'm always affected by this. Yeah, I, 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 there's a chemical reaction that happens inside of me. All right, The Caregiver's Companion. Uh, how do we get the book? Oh, it's every place. It's on Amazon. They could go to caregiverstory.com and all of the links to all the bookstores throughout the universe, it's there. So any, they could just Google it. They'll pop up. And by the way, Caregiver's Companion has been number uh, eight on the bestsellers list since its release three weeks ago. So I appreciate it. People are buying the book because they need the book. And uh, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you, Carolyn. It was a great interview. And for the listeners, call me if you need the information repeated. Plus, Robin already has it on the guest list. Caregiverstory.com is the, is the website. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll be right back. A ruling on those challenges is expected by late June. Fox Radio's Jared Alpern. Another winter pounding of snow for New England.